What's going on? What's happening? How we doing? We back up in the building. Welcome to the Millennial Masterclass Podcast, episode 24. Oh yeah, this is that Kobe number, okay? All right, hear, hear me say it again. It's that Kobe number, all right? I'm Trist. I'm posted up in Harlem, chilling, straight chilling. It was a beautiful day outside. I wonder how the weather was in the DMV today. This little game is so <laughs> We never know who this is going to pick. <laughs> so what's going on, Sean? How was it in the DMV? What's- <laughs> DMV has been great. Um, it's finally starting to get warm out here, so I'm really excited about that. You know, when the sun's out, the buns come out, so I'm just ready for springtime in the DMV. And cherry I feel that. To pop out. That they are. And his chest finna pop out too. So I'm committed to this shirtless summer Ooh, movement. Okay. Okay. Shirtless summer. Shirtless summer, baby. I'm wearing it right now because it ain't summer just yet, but it's coming. <laughs> you gotta hold it down until the summer. All right, Leslie, what's been going on with you girl? Yeah, way too much. I'm too booked and too busy. Um, this weekend was full of like, you know, preparations, trying to like pack and get ready because I'm have like two back-to-back trips this week. Um, and then just trying to get through with work so I could actually like enjoy myself and not be thinking about like tasks that I need to complete. So it's been busy, but you know, I won't complain. God's blessed me. So it's all right. You want to do it? Mm-hmm. Oh, and then yesterday from what y'all saw, my sis brought down my three oldest niece, um, because nieces, because the third one, Amari turned four yesterday. So she brought Oh, them what's down. up four? Hey, four. Mm-hmm. Oh, Big four-year-olds. So it was. Did y'all cool. play Beyonce's album? Or? No, we did not. We watched Encanto okay. in that new one, Turning Red, that came out. Is it dope? Show. Are those dope? We haven't seen those yet. Where they're on yeah, the they're actually really good, and they have really like cute messages and stuff like that. Um, Turning Red one had me rolling though because it just they had like this boy band in there called like Four Town, but it was five of them in there, and it was like a mesh of like I saw one that was supposed to be like Justin Timberlake, one that was supposed to be like Nick Carter and stuff like that, and. The dance, it was just so funny. I'm like, oh. and of course, my nieces already know all the words. It literally came out on Friday. And they're, they're just making it for millennial parents. I love it. Facts. Me and my sister like just cracking up. Like, this is hilarious. But, you know, it was cool. So that was my weekend and Monday. Okay. All right. That was an extended weekend. I like that. It's beautiful. Oh, I didn't even say. I saw my boo on Friday. Oh, yeah, boo girl. Remind the people. <laughs> Is How was what's it? His, what's his phone number? What's his phone number? We we just want to make verify. Okay, we just checking. I just want to know how deep this is. I just want. That was. Quick with it. But it was great. I had a really fun time. Did anybody open for him, or was it just him? Shall be going for the open ass. I got there when the opening people was done. God damn! I mean, it might have been somebody fresh. You never know. Probably. Nah, we not there for them. Yeah, and they were too young for mine, for my little taste. I don't be knowing these young folks, so. How you going to learn them if you don't go and see them? We don't need to know everybody. I don't need to know everybody. Everything ain't for everybody. I expect. But I went for him. He did a great job. It was a good time. All right. All right. <laughs> Man, not too much. Honestly, I got in the kitchen. I was doing a little bit of baking, but like I was doing like bastardized version of baking because like when I didn't want to like go full out. So like, OK, like I made like I'll make a brookie. Right. But instead of making like a brownie from scratch and then like the chocolate chip cookies from scratch, I may just get some cookie dough and some brownie mix and then put them together. The brookie still tastes fantastic, though. I feel like that's how everybody does it. Um, what the hell? You made a brookie? Yeah, brookie, a yeah. And a cookie. yeah, because like they sell the mix together, but they don't give you enough cookie dough. So you need to go get your own cookie dough to really get the crop proper consistency. Because like they like you can't you can't do what they give you, because if you do what they give you, it'll be fucked up. Like, you know, like even like with like the Hello Fresh meals, like they suggest you use this. They don't know what the fuck they're talking about. You need to season that shit on your own and get right. It right. They don't know if they knew if they knew, then like I feel like they would sell a lot more products. That's all I'm saying. <laughs> that's fair no nah, but no nah, we, didn't, we didn't do too much did hang out with a couple of friends uh nate came by with oh. uh his his young lady miss amber you know and we uh oh, we had, had a nice little time that is his young lady i mean is it I not did i say her last I name did i give her social security number out you know she's like, like saying names <laughs> okay he was there with some other strange woman all right great <laughs> that that sounds great too what are you talking about you don't drop names like you always doing it yes yes i do and i'm gonna keep doing it and i'm going to keep doing it 
That's it's gonna keep my business to myself from now on. You do what you have to do. You do what you feel I you need to do. Yes. I can't tell you that I won't say another name. You know why I say names? Because I want these people to know that I'm thinking about them, that I care. That's why I'm saying these names. Um, not just to say their name. Way. That's why. Because why are you doing that? Because I was kicking it with Nate. Shit. Right. <laughs> anyway, what else? Is He's a friend it? of the show. He's been on here. I want people to know. Yes. Shout out to Nate. We love you. Hope you're doing well. Hope you and your lady are doing well. Exactly. <laughs> exactly. Exactly. But no, we need to give these people some updates. So what's going on? What's happening in the streets, ma'am? Oh goodness. So huh. is it is it time for the bulletin board? It's it time definitely, for the bulletin board. It definitely is. And y'all know the talk of last week was I would say the close to this Jesse Smollett situation, but it's not finished. Was it the talk of last week? I didn't talk about it one time. <laughs> one time I mean. well others were talking about it okay. i won't speak for everybody but a lot of people were um but jesse he was sentenced to 150 days in jail um in connection to that hate crime that happened back in january 2019 which seems so freaking long ago um it's like what so um basically he'll begin his sentence immediately he was also ordered to pay more than $120,000 in restitution to the city of Chicago and was also fined $25,000. He was also sentenced to 30 months of felony probation. So if y'all remember, he was convicted of lying to the police about the staged attack, which he aired, excuse me, which he hired two brothers to help him undertake near his Streetville apartment. And so the judge in this case is Judge James Lynn issued his ruling last Thursday saying that the incident's extreme premeditation was an aggravating factor in the case. He also said that he believes Smollett orchestrated the attack to an exacting degree, rehearsing it extensively. He said directly to Jesse, you turned your life upside down. You destroyed your life as you know it, because essentially he's black while he won't work as an actor again unless he does his own thing which i know he had something that came out on prime last year but anyway um right so exactly um but he said there's nothing that you can do today that will come close to the damage you've done to your own life oh my Um, god he also said that he believed that jesse just craved attention and that he faked the crime to make (sighs) nigga you crave attention the fucking judge that's who's craving attention with this fucking monologue is ass shit this is what this is what this is what irritates me about this is like, I'm still confused on the whole just thing, what exactly happened, what's true and what's not true. But my thing is like, it's no reason for him to get more jail time for this than the insurrectionists at the Capitol. You know what I'm saying? Like these people still getting slaps on the wrist and you giving this man 150 days for what y'all say, quote unquote, lying and fabricating this whole story. I mean, because low key, that was a publicity stunt, which you don't go to jail for those. So, I mean, if you really want to break it down to it, it was low key publicity stunt for whatever reason it was. And he lied to the police, but like, they're just embarrassed. They were just embarrassed. That was all this was. And they were trying to f- make it an example out of him. Right. It's bullshit. Yeah, it's out of him. For them to say, for the judge to say he ruined his life, that is so dramatic. <laughs> but judges people do that. Worse. It's in the name. But people have done worse than that. Mm-hmm. To say he ruined his life. Come on now. Yes, but, it was a mis- Yes, he fucked up. It was a mistake. Obviously he should be held accountable, but I feel like they're kind of being ridiculous. Like, yeah. No, but judges do that. They say they will say shit like that. They were like, "It chills my blood to look at you." I they wonder why they got him on the, years. on the suicide watch. Um, because damn, maybe because the judge said shit like that to him. So that's speak- why he's going around letting people know he is not suicidal because the fucking judge made it sound like he should kill himself. Exactly, and that's exactly. Like, you'll never work again. You tarnished your family. You fucked up the black neighborhood. Like I don't know. It was just all too much. Was the judge? Was the judge black? No, of course not. He was white. I don't know. That felt like a black star. That's what I'm saying. It did almost feel like some shit Judge Jolie Brown might have said. You know, fucked looked, up your I life. You know, said the worst <laughs> damn thing ever. No, I looked him up. He's white. And speaking of to Sean's point, Jesse did speak out in court and he said he respects the judge and the jury, but he's adamant that he still did not do this. He did not fabricate this story and that he's not suicidal. So if anything happens to him in jail, he didn't do it to himself. Free so Jesse. Now, Free juicy I mean, small yay. Free juicy siblings, small yay. His siblings have been pleading, you know, that they like reevaluate this. Um, that uh, I know they were trying to get him out because they were saying he could be exposed to COVID, and of course the whole like suicide watch thing. They were calling on you know leaders like Al Sharpton and all of them to do something. Even Taraji like spoke out like you know he's his life is already you know bad enough because he won't like you know be hired by people anymore so like she doesn't think this is just and anybody who can help needs to help and so 
that's why I say I don't think it's coming to a close just yet because they are still trying to come to some kind of, you know, positive resolution for Jesse. So why he just not taking accountability? We know you did that shit. You didn't even do it well. I'm not even I'm not even mad at him. To play white people with MAGA, like all of the, the, the plan was dumb. You should just say it. Just say it. It was a dumb plan. Honestly, you know what? I'm hiring a nigga the first chance I get. I'm hiring him the first chance I get. Like it's gonna be the first talk of the town. They'll be like, You hiring you hiring Juicy Small Yay? Yes, I am. That's not Juicy yeah. Small Yay. I'm if hiring anybody can redeem him, it's 50. Did y'all see where he like posted about Monique? How he's gonna hire Monique and try to like, you know, get her back in the game and how like Oprah and Tyler need to apologize to her and stuff like that. He just posted that, like a couple days ago. He's like, I'm I'm a hire, I'm gonna put in my stuff, and you know his stuff is gold. So I don't know. We might be seeing Monique soon. We'll I don't see. know about gold. His stuff is as some solid silver at best. But you I'm here for it. It's because you're not part of the whole power verse, but it's cool. You're trying to get in there, but you're not in it yet. I mean, I got I got a toe in I got a toe in the water. <laughs> you dipped your toe in the, in the power. I got my toe. I got my toes in the water. You did the cute. pinky toe. It's not even your big toe. This shit is <laughs> it's cute. This shit is cute. You know, it's fine. Oh man. I'm so excited about this next story though. Yeah. Oh I have some shit to say. Yeah. So I think we've all <clears throat> excuse me, heard about what happened to Ryan Coogler last week. Oh hell, this is the dumbest shit I've ever viewed in my life. Okay, so Coogler was detained by police. Um, this came out like last week, but this actually happened in January. So um, he was detained by police in January after being mistaken for a bank robber. The Black Panther director was in Atlanta attempting to make a withdrawal from his bank account with Bank of America. Shaking my head in my bank. Um, the teller received an alert on his account, and according to the police support obtained by CNN, because the amount was over ten thousand dollars. So what he did was he wrote on the back of the you know bank slips. Um, he wrote the amount twelve thousand dollars that he wanted to withdraw, but he asked the person to like be discreet, to you know count right. it quietly. Don't shout, don't shout the shit outside. Wait, and, and, you know, like I need to take out twelve thousand dollars. <laughs> like don't shout right. this out. <laughs> He didn't want to announce it, but then also with the the climate of this world where everybody robbing and killing left and right, it's like, of course you don't want that stuff to be out in the open. So as soon as you walk away, somebody gonna clock you on the head and steal your twelve thousand. Got it. I'm not like, worried about my rent when I pay rent with a money order. I'll be like, oh my god, that should be a thousand dollars, and I still was like, don't say that. That's money. real. That's real. It right. could be. I, I could be taking out three hundred dollars. I could be taking out fifty, and I'm still like three hundred dollars. I'm like, nigga, could you do this quietly? You at the ATM, like you know, you get a couple hundred to the ATM. You don't be like one, two. Right, 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 right. I heard you. I heard you put it in my pocket. Then I right. get my car, lock my door, and then make sure it's all right there. Every time, every time. Look, I remember I was at the fucking counter, and the lady's too quiet, to shouting out. So you gonna take out eighty dollars, bitch? If you don't be quiet, like <laughs> what is Why wrong with you? Ever? Like I know you work here every day, and you desensitize, but you gonna get your shit together like I, I in fact i thought out a report too i was like terrible service and dropped the slip right in the box too i want her to know Nigga, what is wrong with with you? You? that's really like that's dangerous for real and maybe i don't know maybe white people don't be feeling that way but go ahead sorry continue the story <laughs> no you're fine great points have been made so far so um let me scroll. Uh, so so basically the teller which was a black woman she's a pregnant black woman actually a little pregnancy uh, brain got her I knew she was black. Black. Mm-hmm. Pregnant, it was this is this is pregnancy brain this is pregnancy <laughs> brain i don't okay that. i excuse it uh, we're not taking that this is pregnancy so, brain i get it she she felt a little um antsy because of the amount mind you he gave her his id he gave her everything did he give his did he give him count number two everything yes he gave her everything needed oh, to be a transaction yeah. So she went to her manager and told her manager how she felt uncomfortable. She wasn't sure like if this was legit or not. And instead of her manager like doing the due diligence and be like, oh, I'll handle it. Let me go talk to, you know, da da da. The manager told her like, oh, if you feel uncomfortable, then, you know, well, that manager first asked her, did he show ID? Did he, you know, give account number, all that stuff. And then he said, if you feel uncomfortable, then you can call the police. So she proceeded to call the police and I listened to the actual police conversation and like the dispatcher was very like calm and just asking questions like, so he provided his ID? She's like, yes. And he just wrote it on the back just to be discreet. She was like, yeah, but you know, I don't know. My manager said if I felt uncomfortable, I could just go ahead and give you a call. She's like, well, I mean, it sounds legit, but we'll just send somebody out to check on it. And of course, when the police got there, he had a security and somebody else, another companion in the car. They arrested them, we put them in handcuffs and then put Coogler in handcuffs as Wait a minute, well. how did they know he was with somebody else? How did they know that? I don't know. They just know that they were outside. What kind of top-notch detective work is this? 
and they arrested all three of them. So were they were there a stakeout? How the fuck they do this? <laughs> like seriously, no. Let's, but like, let's be real. You in the car with your mama. You say, "Mama, I'm be right back. I'm going to the bank." And now they got her in handcuffs and you. How the hell they know she's your mama? I don't know. <laughs> exactly. Did he have so, his like? Did he have his VIN number on him? Yeah, he fuck? probably was together. It's I like, have no idea, man. Okay, they, they put, probably like profiling that at that point. That's, that's it's all profiling, profiling. cuz he looked yeah. Loki, I saw him. He did look like he was going to hold a sign on the side of the street. I ain't going to lie to you. Yeah, like but he, they his, his hair and then he had the mask on. No, and, and then like the clothes. He looked like he was in painter's clothes. Like he looked like he just came from a, a, DIY, Which, a DIY project. I, I mean, if I got that much in the bank, I'm about to be discreet as I exactly. want. I'm, I'm exactly. Only going to too. Like I'm not gonna be wearing my Gucci and Prada and all this stuff. So it's loud. Why? Yeah, and mind you, they, got left in the bank. and mind you, they're in the middle of filming, so he probably just ran out to make the transaction right. something for the movie real quick, you know. And uh, he just, you know, come wearing whatever. I wear whatever to work. Clearly, so um, yeah. So basically, at once everything was verified that he is who he is, which how do you not know Ryan Coogler? Like, well, a lot of people don't know directors. I mean, there's only like name me five directors. But I feel like everybody name me five knows directors. Ryan Coogler. Name me five directors, Coogler? Leslie. Name me five directors. Me. Leslie, I, name me five directors. It ain't about me. Everybody Nigga, knows Ryan That's what I'm trying to tell you. She does not know who that is. She can't even tell you the costume she lady who's so- I don't know Ryan Coogler. She ain't see Black Panther. Maybe her husband white. You don't know. Black Panther and not know who he was still. Child, you know, you name too. me another movie Ryan Coogler directed. I'll wait. He did wait. Uh, Fruitville Station. Fruitville Station. Okay, that's that's that was okay. I'll give you that one. I'll give you that. Got one. But I was I, I was looking for I was looking for Creed. Is was I was looking for it. I'm saying that was the well, same thing. Everything with Michael B. Jordan in it. So anything Michael B. Been in. Um, the, the, to Tristan's point, people more so know actors. That's what I'm saying. Everybody don't know directly. I get it. I get it. But at the same time, it's like, come on, girl. So basically, Bank of America did apologize. They said the situation should have never happened, and uh, Ryan. He, he didn't say what exactly was worked out because, of course, that's his business. That's fine. But he said that they worked out something and they addressed it to his satisfaction and <clears throat> all parties have moved on. And he left it at that. So. Moving on is if I own that Bank of America. <laughs> was he not the most chill nigga Everybody I've ever seen in, in handcuffs? Like, did you see the video? He was the most chill brother in handcuffs. He was like, oh, no, I'm getting out of this. this I mean, at, at that <laughs> point, that's all you... Panic attack and stuff. Like, so I heard him say that as well in the audio. Like, can you take this off of me? I feel like I'm about to have a panic attack. Yeah, because you're being restricted. Yeah. I mean, at that point, it's like you have to try to remain as calm as possible because if you react, you don't know what's about to happen. At this point, we always assume that might be the last time you breathe. You know what I'm saying? Because you just never know what these interactions are going to go. They have to shoot me that day. I'm sorry. I was about to throw a fucking fit. I'm so, I don't give a fuck. No, there's just some things. I was going to throw a fit. I know this. I would have thrown a fit if they had done this over $300. No. Let alone over all this money in my bank so account. Bitch, are you serious? Money. I've been banking here for 20 years and you're going <laughs> to do some shit like this? Right. 12000 in him is like $12. That's, of but it don't matter. that Now it is. It didn't used to be that way when a man of was course. sleeping in his car and everything. That's of all course. I'm saying. Of course. Um, so yeah, so Bank of America said we deeply regret that this incident ever occurred. It should have never happened. And we apologize to Mr. Kugler. So they also about to donate a couple million to black HBCUs or something. Something. They worked, out, they worked out a great deal behind the scenes and Ryan's like, ain't none of y'all business, but just know we good over here. Because there was, there was for sure, like, I'd, I'd have been happy in those because I'd have been like, ah, lawsuit, baby. I'd have been, I'd have been, at a certain point, I'd be like, oh. If you live, baby. That's about to be Leslie Bank of America. That whole branch is yours. She said, I want this branch. This is mine. Yeah. I want that. The, the Bank of Leslie is what it's about to be. <laughs> Hello. So we're going to need, gonna need to rebrand this one, this whole one. Yeah, it's going to be called Wakanda Bank. Uh, you'll be able to come here. It's going to be Bank of Humphrey, actually. For my Bank daddy of name Humphrey. Was. Okay. Put some I mean, that's, that's real. That's super real. Glad he got out of that situation. Yeah, man, that is fucking crazy. I just, I guess for me, the whole thing is just like, why, like, what made you? Because the thing is that if you had given them the money, if you had just given him the money and he all his IDs checked out, you had nothing to lose. You wouldn't have been fired, right? You, you wouldn't have been fired. Due diligence, you check. Right. You check He's on camera. Mm -hmm. He gave you his ID. Mm -hmm. You have the correct account number. You can flag it. You can do all the proper things. And you were not going to go, you weren't going to get fired for following orders and following procedure. So what was right. all this about? Did you just want some excitement in your day? 
People try to be Captain Save them. Like, if we get robbed, here, take it all. This ain't my money. I ain't trying to lose I my life. So, you know what I'm saying? Enjoy, bro. Did you want the vault code? I have the vault code. I have it right here. Would you like to go? Right. Inside? It's like, what? I saving can I help you in the safety deposit boxes? I don't have the other key, but I can do what I can for you. Isn't it Vivica and set it off? What's the procedure? What, the procedure is you get every motherfucking thing in here. You can have my purse if you want it. No, you can, I don't, no, I'm not. I'm not gonna freely offer that up. But I mean, if I'm they decide to take it, right, right, that's super real. Look, look, I don't even bank here myself, so <laughs> <laughs> you can have this all ain't this. Even my bank, bro. You can have all this. And then they saw he wasn't even armed or anything. Like, what did you think was gonna occur? Like, I'm just so confused but about all of this. Somebody with a debit card. Well, well, now they talk about that story in Pulp Fiction, but that's true though. Dude came in the phone in the bank with um a telephone and was like, "Hey, they were like, he gave it to the bank teller, we're gonna kill this guy's girl if you don't give him this money," you know. So I mean, essentially, mm -hmm. people have robbed a bank with a telephone before. It's not like it hasn't been done, but it's just like he was way too calm to be a bank robber. I'm sorry. Like, what was going on? Yeah, like, what? Well, I just kind of want to know what was, what was the getaway car like? Was it like was it a Mustang or something, or was it like in a minivan outside? And they was like, "Oh, he gonna get away in this. He gonna get away in this." Stop it. I have no idea. But to answer your question before, I got five. One I actually don't want to mention because it's kind of terrible. But anyway, Tyler Perry, uh, okay. Ava DuVernay, okay, Michael Bay, Steven Spielberg. Uh, I want to think of somebody else. That fifth one is a really bad one. Um. What's the one? Uh, Boys in the Hood. Um, John Snowfall. Singleton. Yes, John Singleton. Yep. Who was the fifth one that's really bad? Polanski or something? No, Woody Allen. You know he. You know we. Oh, I mean, <laughs> yeah, that's not great. Did you fucking whispered Woody Allen. <laughs> like that yeah, was gonna make it better. That. You know. <laughs> <laughs> you know, speak him but that's know. what i'm saying it's difficult to name five directors that's what i'm saying you're like right. unless I, unless yeah. you're into the shit and then I, go deeper even deeper name me five producers you know what i'm saying really? like i don't know what half them people fucking look like that's what you and mean. see yeah. like there are people right I now i know ryan coopler i know his name but i wouldn't i don't know what he looks like i'll do you one better tarantino many people don't have no idea what tarantino looks like they've seen all his movies you, seen oh, him I know in if you've seen him in the movies, maybe, but a lot of people just don't even realize he was the director. Had no idea. It looks like crazy white boy. It's the white boy when they be. Ugh. See what I'm saying? You live next to them Asian people. What's that movie? What? Wait, wait. <laughs> it's the white guy. Isn't that a Quentin Tarantino movie? What are you talking about? He lives. He got these Asian neighbors, and he ended up being friends with one of the kids. It was like an old girl. That's guy. Grand Torino, and that's Clint there Eastwood. That's that that's Clint Eastwood. That's somebody totally <laughs> different. <laughs> I rest my case. I rest I'm my case. You what I was talking about. I was feeling crazy. I'm like, you know that movie. I you saw that movie in theaters. I love Grand Torino. That's a good movie. Mm -hmm. I enjoy yeah. the movie. Well, I'm gonna rest this bulletin. So <laughs> that's all I got <laughs> for y'all this week. So you know, I'm gonna keep my ears to the street. Report back next week. Hopefully be all positive stuff. Well, nope, because I already know what we were talking about. So, well, there's going to be some more mess. So. <laughs> we're going to start off with a death, Leslie. That's Lord, all okay. <laughs> all right. Yes, more mess, no death. Boom. New we'll model. be right back, y'all. <laughs>
once that disco era starts really cranking up after that soul, that disco era, that's when you really start seeing DJs to the forefront because nightlife is so um, lucrative that it's pushing the record industry on yeah. both sides. Right. So yeah. DJs are not only tastemakers, they a and they resources. Hey, boom. Like, all right. Yeah. So, all right. Perfect. That, and this is a, a perfect segue to talk about it. DJing is now becoming more marginalized, mm-hmm. more, more racist. Like mm-hmm. it's, it's more disproportionate. Like the cost of entry is like astronomical. Do you know how much it costs to have new DJ equipment, including laptop? Five to six thousand dollars. Closer to ten, but mm. the laptop alone is gonna cost you three. Yeah, that's real. Because yeah. you need a te- you need at least a terabyte of storage. Correct. Mm-hmm. At least you need at least fast RAM, fast um turnover and everything else. i9 i9 processor something like that i I mean the m1s are out now so it's like you might as well go with the mac process and shit but you know like you're still gonna need something that's faster than any other regular computer dj computers are not the same they're like gaming computers but worse because we have to hold everything on our actual joint or an external which makes it even worse the origin of dj and especially for hip-hop black DJs, which is the origin of the DJing culture, comes from poor kids having to go steal turntables and or buy them from a pawn shop and or repurpose non-scratching turntables to make scratches on them. The first person to uh, uh, do a scratch is Grand Wizard Theodore. Hey. Okay, history. I'm so here for these history facts, right? Well, look, uh, I'll, I'll keep it. I'll keep it more frank. the The holy trinity of hip hop is all DJs. Okay. So hip hop does not get started without the founder, Cool Herc, DJ Cool Herc. I say you better say DJ Cool Herc. I better hear that name. Yeah. Uh, 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 African Bambada, even though we hey. hate him now. Yeah. <laughs> no, we 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 hate we hate him now. I get that, but now. I mean, Planet that. Rock is still yeah. the shit. <laughs> yeah, even though it's stolen from Kraftwerk, that's another right, story. That's real. And 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 then the Grandmaster Flash. So Cool Herc is the originator. Um, and then you have uh Flash is pretty much the 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 salesperson. He helps at least the proprietor, the, the person that gets the music to everybody, but he also is himself an artist. But African Mambada is the person that articulates. Um, everything into an art form that makes it palpable for these people across all hoods. Everybody is unified now under the music. Mm-hmm. So he was able to mix all these genres into one and then make it into song. So out of all of these people, African Mambada is the biggest artist because he was able to make music from this nucleus of DJ and culture and everything else. So he was making his own music instead of just playing other people's or in addition to playing other people's? A mixture of both. A lot of the early uh, hip hop productions are like loops. Marley Marl is the first person to do, to, to chop below a loop. Like he's the first person to do like drum samples. So but you know how like um, what's the first hip hop song ever? Hip hop, hip 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 hip. That's just a loop of. It's a loop of good times. Mm. Correct. Yeah. Good chic. Time. It's a yeah, loop. By chic, yeah. <laughs> it's a loop of the beginning good times. Yeah. So a lot of the early hip hop music is, is mostly loops. It's not until a little later, until Marley Mar Marley Marley, I think Marley Marl Marley Marley Marl of the Juice Crew from Queens. He's one of the first people to um, chop down loops into the just the the drum sample. So the pop of the drum or the boom boom boom. So I mean, he's he's to sample like that much of it mm-hmm. out of the record. And then he was one of the first people to do that. And then that's really what changed the texture of everything. 
we start we stopped using loops and live instruments and started using um, what's called programmers or samplers. So you can take the little drum sample, program it into, and then make your own little beat. And then that was that's really how the the sport grew. Mm-hmm. But um, yeah, DJing is the origin of all hip hop, like across the board. Across the board, we wouldn't be here without us. But in that origin and also in its blackness and lack of formal documentation across the board, people have taken what we have used as inspiration and commodified it uh, to kind of lock out the people that would have had it back then and now. So if you poor and you want to be a DJ, you kind of got to do something extreme to get noticed or get money to retroactively pad yourself and fund your lifestyle because DJing it's not it's not cheap and it's not financially sustainable honestly unless you you are somebody for real like it takes a long time to to really do something in in this industry now especially if you do not know nothing or do not know nobody so that's why you see a lot of people now just going to get popular first and then I'll Mm -hmm. DJ later like I'll do comedy and then take a DJ class. Now I'm a DJ. I'll model, take a DJ class. Now I'm a DJ. Now what they don't tell you is that, oh yeah, I DJ so I can go back to comedy and use the DJ or I model so I can up my gigs and then use that. You know, it isn't always for the greater level DJ, which kind of messes it up sometimes. Like it, it convolutes it. It definitely convolutes it. It makes it complex. I'm telling you, everybody just feels like they can just play a couple of songs in their DJ. And it's like, where are yeah. the transitions? Where are the, this, well, this, this ain't right. This ain't right. I need a whole Even, bunch even of worse, stuff. even worse than that, because DJing is so based on word of mouth, referral, other people's opinion, they know your job can live or die in their hand if you're not big enough. Whereas if you're big enough, they will kind of push their patience aside just to kind of hear you out and th- be more accepting to what you might bring just because you've got this extra. So, mm-hmm. you know, it's a give and take. It's a give and take. It's a give and take. Yes. Yeah. Um, I joked with you last year that I was on your world tour because out of three out of the four weddings I went to last year, you were the DJ. I'm like, Listen. yes, I'm almost a couple more of COVID didn't stop us, but yeah, the, the, the weddings were an overdrive and I mean, I'm I'm blessed to say the least, to be honest, yeah. because I've been doing it for a second, but it's now to the point where it's its own income. Mm-hmm. It, it's its own income, and uh, the the price is high, like and it, and it has to stay as high. It, and it 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 really helped me understand value as a person, because there's times where I'll, I'll try to do gigs or try to do clubs or events nights, this, that, and the third, and and things won't come together and it'll mess up my ego or my psyche because I know I'm black and I don't have the resources as these people in these agencies. So everything lives and dies on my word. I'm my manager. I'm my booking agent. I'm my PR. I'm often my photographer, my editor. I know how to, I have a design certificate from UCLA. Wow. I know yeah. that. So you know. Yeah, I I um I was a photographer in high school. Like, do we need to contract you, it. nigga? Like, what's good? <laughs> we'll we'll talk about that later. Because I only shot film. I only shot 35 millimeter. Uh, to this day, I only shoot film, but I only shot 35 millimeter uh, black and whites, unedited. Okay, Spike. Uh-huh. All right. Yeah. Okay. So for me, like that was I won a Columbia Award. Now me and everybody else won one together. But I was not only art layout editor assistant but i also had um uh pictures in there in the uh in our art magazine so i was kind of i i knew what to do as a youngster but i just didn't know all these skills would needed to come back together because you gotta understand like i'm independent so i'm fighting against djs that got teams Mm -hmm. like let's say you work for an artist that artist team is now your team you able to use them resources, flight credits, hotels, this, that, and the third. Like, I, I got to buy my flight. I got to put them points on my, you feel me? Like, sometimes I don't get them. Sometimes I got to fly standby. I, I got horror stories for you. 
but I'm, I'm blessed to be in a position where I have control and I have uh, success um, because it isn't always guaranteed. DJing is, is what taught me that just because you work hard don't mean that you finna get good results. Mm-hmm. Just because you're talented and you work hard don't mean you're going to get good results. Just because you're talented, you work hard, you pray, and your grandma pray, and everybody else pray for you. And just because you know the pastor, like, that don't mean nothing. That don't mean nothing. There's people getting by you just because they're rich or they this or they that. So what are you going to do about that? No, that's real. Um, so do you remember your first major gig and how you felt the moment you dropped that perfect song that just made the crowd go wild? First major gig. Uh, mm-hmm. What you um, consider major, you know? I'll give you two sides of it. And okay. I think they happen in, in between like 18 months of each other. So it'll give you like a little kind of understanding. Mm-hmm. So my one of my first real gigs was um Brandon Harris was running for uh not president, but like something like treasure yeah treasure treasure school treasure or something like that so this is freshman year as, uh, as like a sophomore year. oh that's no, right you're right year. no he was running for class president he, he's running for class president correct right, 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 yeah. um yeah. yeah and uh i pulled up laptop with um some radio speakers and some other stuff and we we got the job done now you know this is kind of crude at the time because this is more or less me like what am I doing? Like, am I doing this? Like, I didn't, I hadn't made the decision in my heart to be a DJ. I was just like, you know, this is what I'm doing. And, you know, I like it. And then Brandon, Brandon is my best homeboy. You feel me? So I can't leave him out there. And like, we not rich. We don't have no money. So it's like, you know, whatever you got, like give me some food from the calf, whatever you have to take <laughs> speakers down there. Like, and we made it work and we made it work. And that's mm-hmm. how it worked. Like we was using computer speakers for a while like i was i was doing any and everything i was djing off a laptop off itunes in somebody's house next to drew like it was that that whole first second semester really like got me together now fast forward 18 months i want to say it's like a second semester sophomore year first semester junior year somewhere in there we doing the haiti benefit well, the, the one Wale showed up for, right? Exactly. Featuring Wale. I remember. Mm-hmm. Yeah. And um, another DJ who I won't name. <laughs> <laughs> he, he told me, he was like, hey, um, don't bother showing up, bro. He was there already, by the way. I was an hour and a half early for a gig. He's there. He tells me, I don't know why he's early for my gig, but he tells me, Hey, don't, don't, don't bother, you know, don't even worry about setting up, bro. They, you know, they call some KYS mixer. KYS is the radio station out there, mm-hmm. big hip hop radio station. It was like, don't worry, bro. They call some KYS mixer. You know, they, they not even gonna let you get no burn, bro. You feel me? It's not even gone. It's not even gonna be nothing. I was like, yeah, I guess. <laughs> yeah, you know, maybe. I don't know. You know, wait for him to leave. Go set up. <laughs> I rocked all night and we had a great time. Mm-hmm. Outside of the fact that Wale thought I wasn't playing his music when he in fact gave his CD to the people in the back. But no, no DJ came from Oh KYS shit, I remember up. that. We thought you had beef with Wale, bro. <laughs> no, <laughs> not at all. Not at all. The funny, the funny thing was I'm pointing out into the crowd, like, look, bro, because you gotta remember there's a front of house. There's a front of house. So, like, there's a front, somebody looking at the stage doing, like, you know, manipulating elements and everything else. This person is out there with Wale's music looking at us like an idiot. And I'm like, bro, I have the songs on my laptop. Do you want me to play them? And they like, nah, just play the music I gave you. I'm like, bro, you didn't give me no music. Now, if you want me to play some songs of yours that I have, because I have all of them on my laptop, I would do that. Gladly. He was like, no, yeah, but 
honestly, he wasn't even really talking to me. He was just kind of like, yeah, the DJ doing this, the DJ doing that. I'm like, I know you're not talking to me. Like, <laughs> yeah, bro, we me. for sure thought you had beef while I was like, God damn, no. beef while I and, and, and look, that's how they made it. That made it seem too because like I'm gonna give it a bean with you. Me and Wale was on the same stage. He could have just walked over to left. That's a good point. We we on the same. We this is one of the few times where I'm not DJing from the crowd. Like mm-hmm. a, a lot of times in Crampton, like I would DJ from in the back of the house, sitting, yeah. looking at the stage. Yeah, mm-hmm. this was a time where I'm on the side. I'm on the side of the stage. It's like, bro, it's no excuse. Just walk over. <laughs> no, it was just, it was just a real, it was a very goofy moment for everybody, but. Outside of that, it was big for me, and the event went spectacular. A lot of people saw it. The event went off, went off without a hitch. Everybody um, raised money. I was upset I wasn't in the picture, but you know, I, I, <laughs> I've, I've taken that and I prayed about it and I healed. So okay. it's a, it's just a good joke now. All yeah, kind of like twenty twelve homecoming. Oh. <laughs> I mean, do you want to talk about it since we're here now? Like, I think everybody um, remembers that. Like, it, it's it's great, and it's I I'm more upset because it's like I'm missing out of the whole thing. Like, uh-huh. I'm missing out of the the whole joint. So everybody's like, "Hey, like, how was it being up there with Drake?" I was like. <laughs> <laughs> It was so cool being in the same city with him at the same time, you know, like, you know, it was, it was, you know. (laughs) (laughs) We were just actually talking about that this past week and I was with a couple of my uh, LBs or whatever. We were just talking, reminiscing about that homecoming experience and stuff and just talking about how crazy it was. And it's like, right, like, it was ridiculous. It it was the the Trump presidency of homecomings. Yeah. (laughs) Like, is this really going to happen? And then it happened. Right. And I was like, we had no idea what this was going to lead to. Like, yeah, we yeah. thought this was just good PR. And no, nope, look, look, we can't keep up. We can't keep up. We bit off more than we could chew. But no, nah, that was, um, it really, I, I have no issue with the, the Yardfest show itself. Yardfest actually, for the rain and everything else that happened, it actually kind of turned up. I feel mm-hmm. bad for the, for the rest of the week that ended up losing because all the other events ended up being pulled because they didn't want to put all the whoop into it and everything else. And then that later on messed up the retention for the week. So if you noticed after that homecoming, it was Never hard. Yeah, it was hard to keep an entire week yep. with the same importance. Like back in the before that, you used to go to homecoming and you could you would be excited for every single day. Oh fuck on yeah, the bro! Week. It was like a week on and a half week. of events. Yeah, like, man. Like, like, like it would start like, the week before, like before mm-hmm. the, yeah. They were adding extra stuff, like and and it was it would come like all right, so it would be midnight madness would be like two weeks or a week before or mm-hmm. some right. some close like, yeah, and then and then it would like lead into it. It was like. It would be like a little fake party, and then like a little some pop out event, and that unveiling, unveiling. And then the re, then the reveal, and then you gonna find it's a party to find out who's gonna be there, and then that's when you that's when you get excited. Mm-hmm. You know that is when you get excited. Unveiling. Oh yeah, I remember that. Yeah, yeah you remember the unveiling was a whole because it would be on Sunday night, right before the Monday no, night event. No, no, no. The unveiling, it was during the week. The, the unveiling was during the week in the punch house. Oh, that's right. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. Well, there they was a party for, to reveal who yeah. goes to the party. Yeah. No, there Except was. For, the, I think our, our junior there, year was in Crampton because it had gotten it, so big. It got like, big. Yeah, yeah. I was in Crampton. And then one time it was in, I want to say Blackburn because they brought in like yeah. a, a second line or something. Like, I was yeah. like, this, this, we could have saved this money for the actual event, <laughs> but <laughs> it was a whole thing. What, what do I know? Then yeah. the event be on budget. Okay. <laughs> Man, those yeah. homecomings were lit back in the day. But, um, homecoming was another one where where it made me realize, like, okay, this is this is real. Like, this is not fake. You're supposed to be here. You are a representative of these people. Being on stage, having people like, that's chubby. And it's like, yeah, that's me. <laughs> like, yeah, like, people knew I was, like, whacked out, like, super geeked up to be there because the first homecoming, I'm in a tuxedo. Oh, I'm in a, I'm in a tuxedo. 
I can't yeah, say right. I remember that. I remember a bow tie maybe, but I don't remember. No oh, I, I will definitely. I, I have it on point. And because yesterday was DJ Premonition's birthday mm -hmm. and I was, that was the first homecoming we did together. Mm -hmm. That was kind of like the changing of the guard. Like after that, he pretty much was like, you got it, kid. You got it. Like, he didn't stand in my way. The name I haven't so he, heard in quite some time. DJ Premonition. No, that's the man. Mm -hmm. you know, first of all, First off, that's the official DJ of the Washington Commanders. Oh, I didn't know that. That's the same. Okay, Washington yeah. Commanders. I'll never get used yeah. to that name. Yeah. <laughs> weird as hell, but okay. Or she's Washington football team. But yeah, that's the official <laughs> DJ of Washington football team. I mean, that's Commanders is that. Commanders is a step away from saying Colonials, a step away from saying Manifest Colonizers. Destiny is. You know, so it's yeah, it's, it sounds like states rights, but you know, <laughs> <laughs> it's like okay, we're not gonna say we're the Native Americans. We're gonna say we're the people that killed them. That's what we're. Gonna <laughs> That's who we're gonna be. Everybody knows the dog whistle except for the dog, I guess. Right, exactly. Um, you had mentioned that you have experience with you know creating beats and producing your own music. Do you plan to do more of that in the future, or are yes. you sticking with DJ? Okay. Go but okay, to, you ask me a question. Music. Sorry. Yeah. Yes, so, um, yeah. I uh, bef before I turn thirty three, you'll you'll get you'll get a um, you'll get formal productions. You'll get a okay. you'll get you'll get songs from me. Okay. You'll get. You'll get you'll As in, get like you rap. are the artist. It's the voice. You're the voice we're here. Yeah, she'll hear me rap. Yeah. Okay. This is a DJ Khaled situation. I was thinking DJ talking? Mustard. That's what I was thinking. Oh, ooh, that was no. Cool. I, I was um, I was actually rapping first. Oh, okay. yeah. So Musical before, I, yeah, before I was producing, um, I was like, me and my homeboy Marty, he lived around the corner. We was in like a fake rap group <laughs> together. What was the name so, of said fake rap group? Uh, that's for the next episode. Fair enough. Okay. Fair <laughs> that's for the enough. Next, okay. next, next episode. I can't give you everything at once. Because no, they're going to look for it and find it, and then it's going to mess up my promo rollout. Oh, so I'm for sure going to look for it and find it. I'm yeah, like, I'm, <laughs> it depends on what kind of MySpace you got, you know. MySpace. <laughs> no, oh, my but yeah, you're going to get a lot from me, a lot from me. And I'm sitting on a lot of work, like uh, a lot of people I worked with, a lot of friends, a lot of favors, you know, so I got to go cash in. It's time to cash in. Um. Uh. Yeah, you're, you're. You're. It was supposed to be done a long time ago. If you go on my, um, this is another picture I need to see. If you go on my page around two, 2015, I was supposed to drop an album. Mm. Oh, it's all it's all good. I already like the cover is done. It was done by Frico. It's me DJ. Me DJ on top of the form. The form is two colors: blue and orange. So, because the form in my lifetime was two colors. So when I was born, it was like reddish orange and then they changed to blue for the Great Western. So, mm. um, yeah, so, uh, yeah, the form is two colors. Me DJing on top of the form and it's like a taco truck down there at the bottom and like a, a saint, like a, a preacher and then like a crib of blood, like dogs, low riders, like I'll send it to you, but it's art and it's like, it's beautiful like it's a beautiful beautiful cover i just couldn't get all the songs done and i just didn't feel like over promoting it at the time when i was really trying to just get my life together yeah <laughs> like, like I, if it wasn't for depression boy i'd be it <laughs> i feel that i feel that so we get it but yeah. we're gonna we're looking forward to some new music you plan on dropping in next year or two that's gonna be exciting for sure. uh, and I as mean, soon I, as you I, drop it we'll be playing it on the show okay like, I finally get to to drop a four tape record. Mm -hmm. So it's so, like, so that's a great segue because I was gonna <laughs> ask, like, how did the twerk tape idea come to be? Like, did that just pop into your head one day? Like, I gotta do a twerk tape record. Well, we were. The, I'll tell you about the record. The record. I'll tell you about the mix first. So the mix comes after. No. Oh, wait. I know I did. I did. Yeah. My apologies. It's all good. And my stepdad, he's cool too. He down. No, no, no. <laughs> my stepdad. I'm doing an interview. It's formal. I'm sorry. <laughs> this, this, this is my dad, dad. 
Hi. I didn't tell them no more. What's up, Pops? I'm another What's guy. good, baby? Apologize. I didn't want to say I got two dads. <laughs> <laughs> Oh, uh, hi, Pops. <laughs> they can't even hear you. They can't even hear you. We heard that, bro. All right. They, they heard you. All right, you good. <laughs> and, and tell, tell Uncle Jody they say he's handsome. Oh. <laughs> well, just tell him he look like a player. <laughs> oh, man. Good time. He did say that. I'm going to be leaving this in the show. <laughs> oh, my gosh. This is too funny. Knocking over my mic anyway. Now, you asked somebody to ask me a question. So tape. Me, yeah, it's like, about this work tape. How it came to oh, be? Oh, um, it was a way to knock out two birds with one stone. We needed PR. We needed branding. We needed a lot, and um, it was a way for me to incorporate Chase's hosting with my mixing. Like I already been doing putting out tapes and everything else, but work tape was like a concept because we all liked twerking music, and then that was the best part of the party for us. So mm -hmm. when I started doing my mixes, I wanted to ex pretty much extrapolate the party and then take out the sections that I liked the most and then I would have mixes for them. So like the slow part called deep, the, the, the meat, the 1230, 130 part is called pork tape. Cause mm -hmm. that's back in the day before it was bottle service, just bottle service, completely bottle service. He used to play for women around the part of the time of the club where it got interesting. Now you just play for rich people. <laughs> things have, things have changed. changed. Right. Oh, how the clubs have changed. The twerk tape has provided so many um, pre-gaming situations. Yeah, I mean, going in. the cool, so the fun memories. part about it was after a while, we kind of, I was able to like time it, you know? Mm -hmm. So like the first one dropped, I want to say on my birthday, because I didn't really have, I didn't really have a lot of confidence in myself. So I was like, you know, if some, if anything, because I wasn't even celebrating my, I, I haven't celebrated my birthday in a long time, but I wasn't even celebrating my birthday. I was just like, hey, it's my birthday, download this. <laughs> like, <laughs> I never tell you about my birthday, so download this. Like, go listen to that. And then after that, it kind of got, kind of got some steam. So what we started doing was like, all right, we're going to drop it right before New Year's. So we'll make the link public, like, New Year's Eve, you feel me? And then leading into New Year's, they could play it all day and then play it all day New Year's. And then we can just get all those streams going into uh, February's Black History Month. And then that's like the beginning of spring break season. Mm -hmm. Spring breaks is from late February all the way to deep April. And then that's when you start clearing out spring comings and pro, pro base and all this other stuff. So it's like we could have hit back-to-back -back seasons all the way into the summer and just won the summer until we cranked up into the winter again. So mm -hmm. after we were able to time it, we were like, all right, boom, this is foolproof. It, it got sweet right around twerk tape three to where it was like, and this really didn't even happen on purpose. It kind of happened on accident because Chase was, he was kind of out of there. He was really like moving me in already. And um, he was in the, he had sent his part from the studio. So it took me a long time to get it and rearrange it and put everything together. But that's why it sounds so good. But once he did that, it kind of delayed the time a little bit. So people were kind of thirsty for it. Like, hey, like, because people that usually got theirs like a week or four, so before, like sometimes I'll put it out like early to my friends so that they can start the hype train, like get people listening to it, get them all the new records out and everything else. So what ends up happening is it takes me to the very last three, four hours to send the pre pre out and then to get the, the mix out damn near in the last hour. But that one broke the meter. Yeah. Broke the meter off. Broke the meter off. So after after three, because I, I I went to jail for a second. Uh after huh? after yeah. Next show. Next show. Next we'll get show. to that. We'll next, show. next show. Next show. We can exchange stories. <laughs> next show. Yeah, very much so. But um, yeah, after three, um, we went to another model. I went to the, I call it the teaching model, but the brotherhood model. So here's me and 
the other DJs at the school. Now they you wouldn't know that unless you went to school with us, but you would just think this is Chubby and Friends or Chubby and a new DJ. And I never made it to where it was like it was me on top and them beneath me or nothing like that. It was all us across the board. Like you feel me? We all all our pictures the same size. Mm-hmm. You feel me? Now it might say DJ Chubby Swag presents, but that's because I'm paying for it. <laughs> like, right. like, like, like if y'all want to pay for you a twerk tank, go pay for you a twerk tank. Go, you feel me? Like go go buy you a mixer in the house. You have people come up there and do you feel me? Like I bought everything. People was doing other mixtapes in my house that wasn't even mine. So I I started using the Brotherhood model. But one thing I regret not doing on none of the tapes was using my own voice. Mm-hmm. I feel like too often, like I was pouring so much into the careers of other people at the time that I didn't do enough to build up the brand that is myself. So it's like still at 32, excuse me, 31 years old, I got to go behind Don't people. Don't age yourself that, yet, bro. Don't put that shit <laughs> yeah, exactly. on yourself yet. It's, 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 a, it's a bad habit. But I still have to go behind people and be like, nah, bro, I can host. I can play reggae. You feel me? I can do this. I can do that. Because it's like, sometimes people will put you in the same box they put you in school. Right. You understand? Mm-hmm. And then living in D.C. is kind of like the worst part about it because it's like... I would rather be a new person there than an old person trying to make something new because yes, yes, I'm in the front. Um, because when you have a new idea or a new concept, they, they're more willing to gravitate to something they don't know rather than they give forgiveness or something that like it's, it's unforgiving. It's an unforgiving place. It's not a place where it's like, you know, you could do wrong and then all, automatically you good. Like, nah, people gotta love you. Right. <laughs> like, they gotta love right. you. They gotta love you because if it's bad, it's all bad. So, um, Twerk Tape is is branding. It's chubby brand. Can you understand? Like, hey. I, everything I do, I try to put um, that legacy in it to where mm-hmm. like you can notice certain things, like themes. You understand theme, like. You know, like, it's going to be at least an hour long. You know, I mean, after the fourth one, you know you're going to get more than one DJ. You know I'm going to go to every place on the map that I can. You know it's going to get different sections. You know it's going to be dance hall. You know it's going to be club music in there. So it's like certain things people start to look forward to. And then, like, it was a point in time where people were calling me out and stuff. Like, on the original one, there's no real reggae for real. Mm-hmm. And then two and three is where I really like, okay, like, yeah, let's cook. Let's cook. Mm-hmm. Let's cook. Let's cook. And then I was going light on the club music in the first two. And then later on, that's when I get really interesting with the club music. So go, go, everything else. Like, I don't do as many go, go records, but I, there's one on one, one on another. Everybody, everybody. You know, I, I tried to weave in the music per popularity. Mm-hmm. So it's like, I probably wouldn't do as much club music in the situation now because club music isn't as popular. Right. Gotcha. Yeah. Back, in, back when we was in school, like, we would go to parties in mm-hmm. nightclubs and there would be a 30-minute section of club music. Watch out for the big girl. Mm-hmm. Watch out for the big girls. Mm-hmm. And it... it you, like it wasn't exclusive to just DC because we was close to Baltimore, Virginia, Philly, Jersey had their own, New York because they were so close to Jersey, Pennsylvania, the state across, like everybody down. Like it's interesting. It's interesting. Interesting across the board. <laughs> but yes, Torch Tape is branding and it was made to highlight the best part of the party and to give women what they wanted and then we knew everybody else will follow right after if you serve the women everybody else will follow the women that's what i'm okay that's an international women's day come on actually that is wow look at this more branding look at that look at that that. (laughs) chubby love the women he know how to treat us there you know it's usually me it's the puff of smoke oh yeah i mean that's how it all started that's how it all started People have hired me for weddings just to, you know, like, hey, I, I know you got that on you, bro. Like, like, <laughs> like, so you, where you going after the yourself? wedding? Like the fuck? It's, it's, to the point, it's to the point now where, like, people, like, I know people's moms who smoke and everything. Like, 
they like, yeah, my mom want to get a half from me. Like, hey, <laughs> chill, like, chill out. Like, bro, do I carry this <laughs> on me? The fuck? Look. That's wild. <laughs> All right. Like, like, that's my old, old job. <laughs> <laughs> All right. Um, okay, so Chubby, please tell us how you got the name Chubby Swag. I feel like it's a perfect name. Everybody knows it. Like, how did that come to mind? Um, first year, I uh, I went to the booty wall, and I met uh, <laughs> wait, wait for people who don't know what the booty wall is. There was a wall in front of the quad; it no longer exists. It just was called the booty wall. It went like booty was just always it's there. Still it still exists. Where girls it's were just there. not the same. Not it's the not same. yeah, and it's not it's not anything sexual. It's really a place where young men met young women. That's really it. Literally, yeah. like if you got lucky, you got lucky anywhere. Like it didn't take a wall. Like, <laughs> it didn't. It didn't. <laughs> Trust right. me, they the people experiment. But the re the reason I was there was more or less I was on this hunt to meet like a hundred people a day, hundred fifty people a day. How many people can I meet? Well, I'm, we're kicking it, and she more or less was like, you know what, you got that chubby swag, and I was like, <laughs> you know how to take it. Say that one more time. One uh, more time. Uh-huh. One more time for me. Right okay. there. It was like, that's it. That's the name that's right it's there. Chubby Swag. Yeah, so we were cool. We were cool for a long time. I think she's still on Facebook. I gotta find her. I owe her like a care package t-shirt, everything. <laughs> but <laughs> quick question yeah, yeah. though. When did like when did you say, okay, I'm not gonna take the I'm gonna drop this Y and I'm gonna go, I'm gonna put the E there. It never had a Y in it. Oh, it never had the Y. Never had one. Oh, okay. I didn't it was, know that. It was, it was, it was phonetic until I decided to go like write it down that night. Well, it was already night, so write it down that morning. Because this was like the first night. So when you talking about you knew me before, uh, you just capping. We was in line together. You heard no, that's that's what night. I'm saying. Like literally, I'm gonna be, I'm gonna be <laughs> all the way real with you. I heard somebody <laughs> say your name, and I was yeah, like, okay. Exactly. And like, and I was like, cool, that's, that's his name. that person, cool. yeah, right. And then and later, like, they no. said, you're, they said, I was like, who the fuck is that? It took yeah, me a second we, to put it together. I didn't know because this is what happened that made it so interesting. I did the the dating game for Pow Week, too. Ooh, mm -hmm. one of the funniest yeah. videos I have so seen. They was like, sometime. that's chubby swag because, and I'm one of the few people that was really like, I um, because it was a hell date, right? Yeah, and. They wasn't expecting me to really like whatever, whatever. So I kind of like, what? Like, what's going on? I'm like, <laughs> to me, so yeah, that was hilarious. And I was up there clowning pals, and later on, became one. So mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Lo love is love. <laughs> yeah. But yeah, that the origin of my name comes from uh, the booty, the booty and this is me right behind. Oh, look at him. That's the picture we're using for uh, the fly. Precious. Yeah, using I'll, it. I'll, I'll give I'll give you a minute. So, I can't I can't stab it from here, bro. But I, Chubby in the booty. Oh, look at you. That's, that's not Chubby. That's true. That's Terrell. That's Chubby. Okay. Oh, that's so cute. So precious. Yeah, so boom. Okay. Well, I do have one last question. Please. Last portion, but it wasn't on the outline. So if you don't want to answer it, that's fine. But, no, I'll do, yeah. I was just okay. giving you a hard time. You know, I like showbiz. <laughs> so I'm trying to like, you know, prop it up a little bit. Right. I feel you. But how was it working with the late, great Nipsey Hussle? Uh, best ever. Uh, it didn't go without hard work. It didn't go without its own complications or consequences, but the time I was able to spend with him, I was able to understand so much, even with giving so little. Like I, it, it was pretty much music industry boot camp. Mm -hmm. You feel me? And you you working with somebody you grew up next to. Mm -hmm. A lot of people don't know that. Like, so you knew him in L.A. like before coming to Howard. Yeah, I, I live on Salsa. I thought yeah. my fault. Yeah. Yeah, you're right. Um, <laughs> It was it was a dream come true and it was also a full circle moment because I used to I used to shop there. Mm -hmm. So before it was the marathon store, it was Sloss and Tees. Okay. Yeah, so it's an old picture of Nipsey outside of it where it say Tees, Sloss and Tees. Like that's what I remember. Fresh on Sloss was always a a business district at the time. So um open air flea market type vibes. So he always used to benefit from that. And then the, the swap meet is uh, a few blocks down on Western. So mm -hmm. coming from my house, I could go to Fox Hills Mall, 
Nipsey spot, swap me all in one day, all in one street. Okay. So yeah, like I I I knew him. We were fans of Nipsey's um beforehand. Like when he came to Howard, when he came to Howard that first time, like I have a picture with him after he performed, like his manager at the time, Steve Lobel, went out in the crowd and was like, Hey, you thrown up in fake gang signs, come over here. Like, you know, <laughs> I was like, we, these gang signs are real, bro. Like, <laughs> um, but yeah, so yeah, that, that it was, man, it's hard to put it in, in to articulate it into words is really a feeling and it felt right. It felt, everything felt together. Like mm-hmm. my birthday is his gang's holiday. Right. Oh wow. Yeah. So my birthday is like June 10th. So mm-hmm. he's from 60s, right? What's six times 10? Yeah. Oh, is that how they got the birthday? Damn, people be creative. They call it <laughs> so right. So I did the Hood Day concert on my, my birthday. Okay. 2012, 12, 13, maybe. And that mm-hmm. House of Blues on Sunset. And that was probably one of the best not only shows of my life because I hosted two I hosted and DJ mm-hmm. but he performed something off Victory Lap back then oh, oh wow and that was a lot of people don't know yeah that was 20, 2012 so the the record I think it might be a bonus track it's the end song it's called uh, Right Hand to God oh and he performed that I actually have a video of it too and he's like shout out my DJ Chubby Swag oh we yeah. love that yeah, so talk about a piece of history mm-hmm. yeah right. but he he means more than what he gave us in the flesh and i feel like i'm glad his legacy got to experience that because it was very difficult for him to experience that while he was here so right. you know like I, nothing but peace nothing but love nothing but good stories for the the life and legacy of that puzzle it's an issue. Shot. And cheers to sharing that. Appreciate yeah. that. Got 100%. Well, brother. Yeah, I, my mother left a smoothie in here, so I'm going to take a sip of that. As Aww. you should. As you should. Oh, my mama. They always take care well, of brother, me. And we, Nipsey love green, green juice, too. So That love actually that, that checks out. Um, <laughs> brother, we have really appreciated you coming today and blessing us with yeah. stories, candor, bravado, Education. charisma. Yeah. That's what I'm saying, history. bro. Like when yeah. I said too sweet to be sour man of the hour, nigga, I meant that shit. Because <laughs> the dude is smooth like that, okay? Like like Let's a can of oil slick. But we can't let you get out of here. Just because we have these old man little quotes. <laughs> I, know, I know a lot of old men. I, I know a lot of old men. I don't know what to tell you. But t- tax sharp now, okay? Now, can't we can't let you get out of here without grilling you a little bit with these hot buttons, brother. So we're going to come at you. Let's Rapid fire. Rapid fire. We these are all pop, 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 pop. They don't know what these are because they don't know. They just don't. And so the number one question is, well, actually, the first thing is spell millennial, please. I can't hear you. Spell millennial. Millennial? Mm-hmm. M-I-L-L-E-N-I-L? Incorrect. Okay, is it one I? No, one you forget. there's another end. There's another end. Oh, the... yeah, millennials Sorry. can't spell millennial, bro. So you're actually we right couldn't where spell you it either be. when we were creating our podcast. We misspelled it, so don't feel bad. Yeah, bro. <laughs> it's like it's one weeks, of them. It real bad. It's one of them words like uh, what's that other word that I always get wrong? Necessary? No, I get necessary right now. Nah, it was one of them. One yeah, of them words that, that got two of one and one of the other, and it always uh-huh. like trip me up every time. Tomorrow used to fuck me up real bad. Tomorrow, that used to get me real bad. Mm. I don't know. <laughs> I don't know because in my mind, I wanted two M's, not two R's. I don't know what it is. It's wild. I, 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 tomorrow, I, I I empathize with you, but it's like we need tomorrow, brother. Like we do, right? we do. But like we just talk about it. I didn't have to write it. You know what I'm saying? So that's like the is. homie. He 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 had a, his bad word is heavy. Heavy, heavy, envy? heavy, heavy. heavy. He can't spell heavy because the 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 way the A the V and the Y they all look alike damn near so he kind of be like it's two V's and it's uh, it's, it's H A A V Y well I know I know savvy be messing them up too if he struggling like and that's the same that's the same canon same canon same canon canon all right come on question number question number two 
if do you, if ugly people if an ugly person comes up to you or a pretty girl comes up to you right ugly girl pretty girl whose song do you play first for the request oh god this was shallow who's what whose song do you whose play song first do for the request play first mm-hmm. the that's so shallow tristan you, what the pretty girl comes up to you whose song do you play first we had nothing to do with this shit just so you know <laughs> like me and leslie didn't even know he was saying this no i'll actually i'll keep it a being with you and i'll tell you what the problem with the industry is i would want to play whoever's gonna dance more or be more interested in the record but thank you thank you i would unfortunately have to lean toward the pretty girl because in this nightclub setting this person has been propped up in order to you know create commerce mm-hmm. so if somebody <laughs> sees no don't get me wrong if somebody sees wrong. pretty girl in dj booth they're like oh it's popping you feel me he got so just off the conversation alone you don't like let's say i don't play it right and then said pretty girl goes up to the owner like oh he didn't play my song <gasps> what the fuck? oh my god you 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 paying patron let me go take it <laughs> ugly, ugly girl do that be like get, get lost muskrat like oh, no, i've seen it i've seen, no, it. Like, I've seen it i believe I've seen it. it i've seen I it i've seen it, it. All oh, right, because because i i'm ugly and i have ugly friends you feel me like so i, I right. know what it feels like and and not regular ugly, but I'm talking about like unconventional, like you know, like I'm not Michael B. Jordan, Tyler Lefley, you know, nigga of the month. Who is so, Tyler? Lefley? I don't even know who that is. But that's real. Don't don't worry about it. Don't worry about it. Yeah. Yeah. We they fine. Just... <laughs> okay, All right. I accept it. Whatever. It's real. Don't bother you yourself, Tristan. Don't you don't watch a video you don't need to watch with Miracle Watch. It's, trust me, it's not worth it. Sun rises or sunsets? Uh, sun rises because I'm usually up already. That's real. Super real. <laughs> if you could have, if you had a dream gig, what would it be? Dream gig. Dream gig. Ooh. DJ and producing, whatever it is. What's that dream gig? What is it? Uh, too many of them, but I would be music supervisor for Janet Jackson. Oh, God so, damn. She's going on tour, too. She's well, going to be at Essence Fest. Do you know go. who her tour DJ is? No, I don't. Who is no? it? DJ, DJ Active. Um, Get the fuck out of here. Is it really? Yeah. DJ Active. Huh. Uh, um, A-K-T-I-V-E. He's a great DJ, too. He's from Philly. He's amazing. I said, don't you but know him? Haven't you, haven't you performed with him before? I've opened, I opened for him. I've opened for D-Nice. I've opened for all those guys. Yeah. Like, That's dope. Man, man so. But, uh, and it would pretty much be his job, but added with some production qualities and something else. It w- I would want a DJ for somebody who has superstar appeal who can get me into any door but who also wouldn't mind doing small rooms small venues you feel me like janet jackson has been so humbled by her experience at the super bowl that she's enjoyed being a regular person more than she's enjoyed being famous almost so yeah. like her being mysterious and all this so like okay like i get it i'm, I'm here for it yeah so uh something like that um or you know, stay staying at home, DJing for like YG and the Raiders and the Dodgers. And, you know, yeah, you want you want to DJ? In, I guess Vegas is dope. I no, I do want to be one of the the few black DJs in Vegas. I tweeted that the other day. I was like, I'm going back to Vegas. See if they hire Negroes. <laughs> see if they, they hire, hire anybody Ray. else other than Shaq. Because you gotta DJ take, you gotta at people on Twitter. That's how you begin shit. Well, that's how I got also blocked from there's a few radio stations out here. I was like, hey, you guys don't have black DJs, and they were like. Say oh. what? Block? <laughs> Had you told who the said, truth? Who, who said what? Block? Yeah. I made a whole change.org petition and everything. Wow. We got two more. Yeah, um, if you could work with one artist and be their DJ, who would it be? Right now, Saucy Santana. Really? Saucy Santana? I think, Santana. I think, oh, I think Saucy walk, Santana walk, is um, walk, walk. on the cusp of doing something uh very breakthrough as being a queer man and then having the ability to switch with versatility from mm-hmm. his like thug side to his you know bad girl side and mm-hmm. it's um engaging on both sides like if you've ever listened to not just the music itself but if you ever went to go see like how the people interact with the music like he's always i've, I've been told people like he is the city girls. Like he's the swag. He's the statements. He's the comments. All that. Like he makes them fun. He makes them really interesting. Because without without him, they're kind of like boring. JT don't do nothing. She want to be up under Uzi all the time. And <laughs> Car- Carisha is trying to turn into like 
you know, boss model diva, but it's kind of mm-hmm. like you still want to do your other your other mm-hmm. side. So Santana's like the fun. He's yeah. the fun. And he can really write too. Like he he his I was listening to the album, like it's you you gotta really go pay attention to what he's saying. Like he's he's really give he's giving it. He's, he's giving, giving it, he's giving it all. And um Yay. the coolest part is he's also in pocket. Mm, so that's real. It's real. not just the ability to rap on beat, but to to have rap on beat with style. So he's able to fit in certain pocket. Mm-hmm. And then he uh he has the ability to to be like he gives you that Atlanta, but he also gives you that Florida too, and people don't don't really remember like how 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 good Florida had it on the the thug side and on the the twerk and party and bounce music. Right. I mean, and uh, booty bass music side and everything else. So Saucy Santana is definitely like up there. Like I've been I've been telling people like yeah, and I think it would be the allegiance between straight men and queer men that black people would need to see. I like that, it. that is a well formed right. answer, bro. That might be one of the best Damn. answers we ever had for something on this show, especially the way you explained that out methodically. Yeah, like, I enjoy I've, that. I've, I've always tried to um, find ways to partner up with the community without um, involving myself or centering myself or adding disrespect. One of my uh, closer friends now is Calvin DJ Trife. I'm gonna yeah. say, and, uh, I was literally bro. gonna ask, bro. Like, had like, what is your relationship with DJ Trife exactly? Yeah. Well, Calvin allowed me to to make one of my dreams come true. I did a gay event, um, uh, a homecoming event, and some something else all in the same day. And then that really took my stock. Is that up. specifically your dream to do all those events in one day? Yeah. Well, I yeah. my dream is always to set records. Gotcha. So, bro. like, when I was at Howard, I did. Well, I like to call it the trifecta. You feel me? You want to do homecoming, bison ball, and um, uh, something else all in the same year. And then that's when you know you, you feel me, you lit. Like, mm-hmm. you, you can't nobody take it from me. So once I was able to do all that, that's when I started adding extras to it. Like, yeah, I want the awards too. And yeah, I want to put my people on too. And then, yeah, I want to DJ on uh, HBC with turntables. I want to DJ on HUR. Like, we were, we were pushing boundaries. Little did I know, like me pushing for DJs on HUR back then led them to HUR having DJs right now. Uh, that's well, then that ties into this last question. Go ahead. This is your dream twerk tape, and you could have a dream collection of DJs. You can get anybody. Budget's not an issue. You got you got five DJs you can add on this twerk tape. Who are they gonna be? Five for that? Yeah, brother, five. So really, your five favorite DJs? No, that's that that couldn't be because no. I some of them are not. Five. Some of them are not. I would. I get they it. not. They not. They wouldn't do that. I wouldn't disrespect them with that. Like, I wouldn't put Jesse J. That's real. Tape. I don't know what is, what is he doing on the twerk no, tape. That's I'd rather real. know who are your five favorite DJs. Of all My time. five favorite DJs of all time. Yeah. <sighs> I mean, if you can answer Ooh. both questions at the one time, that's cool too. But I mean, that's fine. I'm here for it either I, way. Okay, I'll, I'll start with my five favorite. I'll, I'll talk about five very important DJs that near near and dear to my heart um dj aladdin is from compton Mm -hmm. he was a member of a rap group called low profile but he was one of the first black djs from this area to compete in what we know as the dmc the disco mix club it's the uh biggest dj in competition around the world so he was a gangbanger from la and won the competition in new york and then competed on the world stage and came in second Wow. So he he's an inspiration for me, like from way, 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 way back, because a lot of people aren't able to tell his story. But he was the person that pretty much laid it out so we could play it out. Um, the second the second person is two DJs mixed. It's really like because they're both DJs and producers, but it's Battle Cat and DJ Quick. Mm-hmm. And they're pretty much our hometown heroes. Like everybody talks about Dre, you feel me? But. Dre is supplemented by these two other gentlemen who really are crafting the sound on the ground. In addition to that, also being in LA for so long, these people garnered a lot for themselves. Like Dr. Dre made in the club for 50 cent off of DJ Quick's NPC. Battle Cat made faithfully for uh, Faith Evans. Not to mention, he's the only he's the only other producer to ever have a credit on a Dr. Dre album. Oh. 
That's crazy. More history yeah. here. Yeah, exactly. DJ Talk Quick also. DJ Quick is also a rapper, and he's uh he's the proprietor of uh not the actual Banging on Wax brand, but he's one of the first people to claim his set on uh, vinyl. You know, henceforth. So the the those are important in uh, my music's history. Um, Kid Capri. Okay. Mm-hmm. He's like a necessary evil. <laughs> like, you know, I've, everybody knows he's like, you know, he has the, the ego and everything now. But he's the first DJ with a manager, for real. Oh. So he's he's the person we look to that took Black DJing business into the stratosphere. Like, it was a well-known secret for a long time. If you don't have $10,000, don't call his phone. Mm. <laughs> don't bother do, do not bother like calling that. that man's phone like do not, do not bother calling this man's phone and he's he's a real like he's a real stepper too like he has his own albums he pro- he produces and he does everything else too but he don't they they call it no kidding he don't have time to kid around mm-hmm. he don't have time to play so kid capri is serious and he still to this day practice every day wow. still practice every day practice every I day feel that. practice every day so you got to give it up for Kid Capri and um, number four, uh, Grandmaster Flash. Okay, absolutely. Grandmaster Flash, Great. and um, go ahead. You got five. Yeah, uh, Grandmaster Flash doesn't really need no. If you don't know Grandmaster Flash, <laughs> is, no explanation. Bro, like we got that. it's we really got. It's sad <laughs> at this point because it, it, to to talk about it is really disrespectful because it's like. He's done everything. Mm-hmm. everything. Literally everything. Everything, everything. everything except for battle. You feel me? Like, he don't battle. And that the that's the cool thing about Grandmaster Flash because he's the only person. He, no, it's just Terrell. Sorry about that. He's the only person that really don't have to battle because all he has to do, for the most part, I'll, I'll tell you something. His turntables are set up in a style that's called, like, club style or something. It's not battle style. Battle style is when both turntables are one next to the other with the mixer in the middle and they're both um, uh, vertical. His style is where they're both horizontal on each side of the mixer. So he definitely not doing no extra tricks and all that other stuff. He's playing hits Mm -hmm. the best way he knows how so you can get up to get down. That's it. It's a purity. It's a purity behind it. It's really a purity behind it. Um, my my fifth one was gonna be a track, but we're still so close to like Black History Month, so I'm gonna go ahead and I'm gonna throw in D Nice. I'm gonna, I'm gonna go th- actually no that's what? super real. I'm gonna put D Nice in the honorable mention. I'm gonna throw in um the honorable and late Rock Raider. Oh, so okay. Rock, respect. Rock Raider is um he's a battle DJ. He's from New York. He's from a, a crew called the Executioners. I'm about to say, bro, the execu- I was really wondering why you hadn't named any Executioners as until right now. Well, look, the Executioners, it, long story, short story, but the Executioners we know is kind of like the second, the second version. They were originally called the X-Men. Hmm. So okay. the X-Men, there's a producer in Puffy's Hitman called I think he's part of Hitman. He's part of Hitman, but he's also part of, like, he has his own imprint. His name is Sean C. Mm-hmm. Can you see me? Sean C. Sean C. But before Sean C was ever a producer, you got it. Before Sean C was ever a producer, he was a battle DJ and a good one, like a winner. A winner. So Rob Swift, Sean C, like all these people, they all come from the same group. But Rock Raider, even though he's not with us no more, he was the he was the one. He mm-hmm. was the one. He was chosen. He was really chosen. And his hands work. And I would love nothing more than to honor his legacy than to make him my number one feature DJ. Because he's that important. That's dope. No, my brother, we appreciate that. Thank you for sitting down with us and taking time out your busy schedule. Because clearly, you know, I see you're a man of the town. I'll explain it more later. It's it's a it's a it's a lot going on right now, Mark. It's a lot going on. It's a lot going on. I, I, I'll, I'll tell y'all later. But I, you know, I love y'all, and I told y'all I was gonna do this. So you know, you always get my word is bond. My word is actually gold. Gold bond is better than bond. 
<laughs> we appreciate you so much though i thoroughly enjoyed this i feel like i learned yeah. so much look oh, it, the next the next one's gonna be a little better because we have some more time but and i might be inebriated so we'll work it out oh Even brother better. please do because you know i was the only one drinking today in fact i'm gonna have another one right now well because i gotta go help my grandma so i gotta be alert you so. hear the door ringing on my end so i love y'all i'll see y'all later all right brother all right, thank, you. thank you so much thank you so much thank you And you know what time it is. It's time to go outside. It's time to stretch those limbs. It's time to do a little something, something about a swing set. It's time for recess. Yes, indeed. Sean, what we got? What's, what we got going on for recess today? What's popping with it? <laughs> <laughs> you know, I try to bring a jingle. I like you. How, I like how you had a mute on your trumpet, but that's cute. That's cool. <laughs> oh, you like that? You like that? That was cute. But no, so today in our recess, first and foremost, I, we want to do our top five music movie soundtracks. Are y'all prepared to listen to top five? We are, but I kind of wanted to talk about new music first. Can we do? Can we switch the order of that? Is that okay? It's up to you. I support you. I just said you wanted to do it the opposite, but clearly. No, we said new music first. <laughs> Damn. <laughs> You run it. You running the show. So look, it's up to you. If you really want to do that first, we can do it. It ain't no thing. It's no world. We just need to do it then, because you should just let it go. All right, fuck it. We doing it. Let's go. It's starting <laughs> with you then. Movie soundtrack. Go, girl. Go, go. Movie get it. Get it. Top get it, girl. Five movie soundtracks. Tristan, I actually want to hear yours first, because I know you. I do too, to because he disagreed on some of the ones yeah, we were like our bangers. So Tristan, you oh, go first. What you got? I kind of wanted to go last, but that's fine. Uh-uh. It's fine. Uh-uh. Okay, on my list. Coming in at number five, Love Jones. Love Jones oh, soundtrack. Um, coming in at number four, which is crazy that it's kind of above Love Jones, but I just feel like it's kind of 2.0, the photograph. I really enjoyed that soundtrack. Robert Glasper did that. And then you have a, mm-hmm. a, a wonderful song by her. They pass the vibe check, then and then some. Coming in at number three, I was kind of back and forth about this one. But number three is going to be the Superfly soundtrack. Superfly soundtrack from 1972 with uh, oh, okay. Mr. Ron O'Neill. Okay. Yeah, <laughs> and uh, it is that actually that soundtrack is by Curtis Mayfield. Now, for those of us mm. who don't know who Curtis Mayfield is, uh, basically, this is who Pharrell wants to be when he's saying. <laughs> Before we give the last two, I want to give a couple honorable mentions to the Trouble Man soundtrack, Marvin Gaye, the Rent mm. soundtrack, Singing in the Rain. I. I am going to give this sound, shout out to the Batman Forever soundtrack because how else am I going to hear Kiss from a Rose, you know, by Seal? That's that's the jam. Mm-hmm. So coming in at two and right. Mm-hmm. See, as soon as you start, as soon as you say it, you start singing it. Yeah, <laughs> that's a good one. Uh, coming in at number two for me was the Bad Boys 2 soundtrack. Like there yeah. weren't really too many skips. I don't, I don't honestly, I don't skip it now as I play it. And number one for me is Boomerang, the Boomerang soundtrack. You have a, a special noteworthy appearance on there of Boys to Men, End of the Road, 13 mm-hmm. Weeks, number one, okay? Come on, musical facts. You ba- baby, face, baby Face and L.A. Reid gave us that beautiful soundtrack. And you have the introduction of Tony, Tony Braxton on there. Love should have mm-hmm. brought you home last night. So shout out to the Boomerang soundtrack. But yeah, those are mine. Those are my top five. So again, okay. five, we have uh, Love Jones, Photograph, Boomer, uh, Superfly, Bad Boys 2, Boomerang. Well, I'm, 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 I'm not mad at that. I didn't know where you were going to go with it. I ain't going right. to lie. I didn't know where you were going to go with it. Um, I did have one from your list on mine. All right now. Yeah, I can go next. You don't mind. Go ahead. Um, You're running the show, girl. Like you and I are gonna have the same things, and I don't want to go after you. So. <laughs> I don't think we are actually. We may have one or two, but I don't think we're gonna have the same okay. thing. Actually, coming in at number five. Actually, I didn't really put this in the order, but I'm gonna me either. Me. That's okay. Coming in at number five, Greeps. Nope, don't have that. Interesting. <laughs> okay. You do I'm mean the you do so mean great. the original. You do mean the original Olivia Newton the John original, and uh. Yeah. Okay. Okay. Love me, Greeps. They fuck it up. Yeah, Greece is great. So, a fun fact: I didn't see Greece until like a couple years ago. Like, nigga, what? Time. Yeah, I didn't grow up watching Greece. My mama didn't watch it until like I don't even know if she's ever seen Greece. Honestly, like that just wasn't. Summer loving. 
Grease Lightning? Come on. I know now. it now. No, no. I know the song now, but like I didn't grow up. The meantime, we've been to karaoke and you never just decided, you know, I should watch Grease one time. No, because you know what I sing and listen to at karaoke. <laughs> That's a good point. That's a good <laughs> Fair enough. This is not bad. Okay. So, oh, the recipes are so hard to have in an order. You don't have to put it in order. I just did mine in order because yeah. I was talking a lot of shit last week. So that's why I okay. put mine in order. All right. Well, I'm going to go in number four, best man. Mm-hmm. That was almost on mine. That's so. three. Okay. Respectable. Love Jones. Yes. Right, love Jones yes. Still. Yes. Number two, Black Panther. Mm-hmm. My I honorable mention, thought about that one. My honorable mention was Hustle and Flow because it's always been hard out here for people. Mm, okay, that's respectable. I did, it did, honestly, it made my top 10. It did not make my my top five, uh-huh. but it did make my top yeah. 10. But Hustle and Flow, that shit, it's always, yeah. Number one, coming in, raining down on number one. I'm sure you already know. Waiting to exhale. Waiting to exhale. Yes. Now, when I tell you, we have Whitney, we have Aretha, we have C-C. Randy. We got BC Winans on there with Whitney. Yeah, mm-hmm. Everybody on this got mm-hmm. Aretha on there. Amazing. And they could have all stayed off it. Could have all stayed off it. Mm. Have you even listened <laughs> to the CCO? I've seen the movie <laughs> and I've actually even read part of the book. Yes, I've heard the soundtrack. It's a it's a good soundtrack. It You've is. seen the movie, read the book, but have you thoroughly listened to the soundtrack? Again? Not the, like again? Not in the yeah. movie. Not in the movie, yeah. but like I am certain just, I've heard all of these songs. I am so it was produced, gotta, it was produced by them. Babyface. You were just talking about how great Babyface was. Like he put his foot in that soundtrack. That is the best soundtrack ever. All right, Leslie, let's hear your top five. So I don't really have an order, but I'll just start right there. Of course, Wayne to Excel. I was actually just re-listening to it with my mom um the other day in the car and we were singing shoot, shoot. Shoot, shoot, man! I'm singing all the songs on there. So I will say, sitting show. up in my room is my jam, though. As I, as I look back right now, that's my jam. That's shit, um, let's see, Dream Girls. I sing all respectable, the songs respectable that, choice. So. Wait a minute, no, you talk. You're talking about the just the movie soundtrack, right? The one with uh Jennifer Hudson, right? Yes. Okay. Yes. Okay. Yes. okay uh-huh. Dream Girls is a bop. Dream yep. Girls. Can't go wrong with Dream Girls. Yep. Um, again, no special order except for Wade Texas. So definitely number one. Um, I definitely have Black Panther on there because that whole that album was a bop. A couple of the mm-hmm. You did. You did. So that was a bop. Um, this Christmas, that whole CD was pretty good. Album, EP, whatever you want to call it. That was a good one. It ain't Donny Hathaway, but it's decent. You're not wrong. I didn't even say that. <laughs> oh, he was going to say that. Donnie Hathaway it, 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 is the, like, the one of the greatest singers to have ever walked this planet. Okay. I give him that. I give him that. Um, and then right there. you said what? He already know what me and you think about this, this Christmas argument. Right. And, did, and, did, exactly. and didn't Donnie Hathaway, didn't he attend the Great Howard University, if I'm not mistaken? Shout out to yeah. Donnie Hathaway. Okay. I didn't. We're not knocking him. We're not hating on him. Yeah, we just like the Chris version. <laughs> um, I guess I'll throw an honorable mention in there. Um, I enjoyed the uh, Love and Basketball soundtrack, especially like one of my favorite songs mm-hmm. on there. Um, that was a pretty good one. I thought it was that one. <laughs> oh, yeah, that is on there. I forget mm-hmm. about that. Yeah. Um, and then this one gonna surprise you, but probably not because it's me. Uh, y'all remember the Like Mike soundtrack? <laughs> you know what's crazy? I I used to have the like Mike soundtrack. Yeah, I used to have it. Yeah. Yeah. That over and over, like I still had that CD. I so mean, like Mike. That was one of those samples that it took me a while to realize that was Curtis Blow. <laughs> like I didn't, you know, I don't, I didn't think I realized that at first. So it's so funny you said that because you know I'm going to the New Edition concert next week with my sister and she sent me a song. Um. I forgot which new edition song it is. I'll have to find it in a second. But she was like, girl, listen to this. It's one of their songs off like one of their first um, CDs or whatever, mm-hmm. albums, I should say. And oh, when they're, when they're kids? Yes, when they're kids. Okay. It's the, um, I ain't never had nobody show me all the things that you know. Yeah. It's that sample. But I had never heard that one new edition song. Oh, I was like, okay. oh, I never listened to it. I was like, ah, oh, that's so funny. So yeah. It's so Can't rare that there's not a sample these days. Everything's a fucking facts. sample. It's ridiculous. Facts. There's nothing new under the sun, as they say. Hi, right, Leslie, what was your five key name again real quick? Yes, so I had Waiting to Exhale, I had Dream Girls, I had Like Mike, This Christmas, and Black Panther. Okay, solid. 
doing? Oh, can we give a special honorable mention to Space Jam and Queen and Slim? Because those oh, are dope no, too. I really wanted to didn't say those. Space Jam, but I couldn't because of R. Kelly. But I really there. wanted to throw so that. Everybody out. else on there is devalued. Everybody else on that thing. Because Max, because our D'Angelo got a deep cut on there called I Found My Smile Again. One of the best songs have ever, ever been written too. That's a good one. Oh, man, I don't know. I just I, I felt a little bad about it, but I can definitely go with Queen and uh, Slim. Oh, that's a, that's a super Bob. Megan was on that soundtrack. That shit was fire. I mean, that yeah. Sid that Sid song is the one. Like when I hear that Sid, Sid song, song, it's it's over. Getting late, it's not getting late. It's just getting started, girl. That's the jam. <laughs> <laughs> you feel silly. That's the one, man. It's the I one. Oh, it. okay. What well, one more? Because I was going through. Because you know how like you go through and like sometimes it's just a song that catches you from them. So like from the Muppet soundtrack, I like the Big House. That was good. And then um, Eye to Eye from the Goofy movie. <laughs> we know, of course. No, that's my jam. Wait, the, is that the one? What's the Goofy movie one? Eye to Eye. Eye to Eye. Is that um the guy you know that? You yeah, know? that's Powerline. That's the one. Powerline. That's Powerline. Know. That's the name. Powerline. And then the When Doves Cry cover from Romeo and Juliet. That little black kid sings. You know, remember Romeo and Juliet? That little black kid singing When that, Doves Cry. Yeah. Hey, oh my god it's like sure. the most magical shit ever like he just comes out of nowhere and he's like 12 and he's a killer like people are deceased when you hear this version it's amazing leslie i'm surprised you ain't saying no tyler perry track they yeah that's track? a good point they, they have a couple i'm yeah. sure uh, i don't know i mean like i enjoy when they sing in the plays but i don't just listen to it over and over again <laughs> and be singing in the car no, i'll be listening to that father can you it's, hear me from that father moment? dude i was just about to say except for that one do you hear me yeah, shout out to Tiffany Evans. Oh, promise oh, ring, yeah. promise yeah. ring. That's my shit right there. Now that we're promise talking about ring. some more up to date music, mm-hmm. what's going on in the music streets right now? Go ahead, tell them, Tristan. Candy drip. Candy yeah. drip. Okay, let yeah. me tell you right now. When a nigga when a nigga puts on his album with no shirt on and a bunch of grease on him, you know that the album better be good. Like it better be good. Crisco. That's what I'm saying. Like it looked like he just took the whole bucket of Crisco and just threw it all on his face. And he's like, Oh, we got this candy drip. We got his shirt off. I'm like, it better be good, player, because that's a bold photo. And you know what? It is really good. I will say the second half of the CD is better than the first, but the whole thing is very good. Mm-hmm. Like, probably from like maybe track okay. like seven to the end it's it's like it's like superb superb like the beginning is like it's really good but like the end it makes a very complete album i'm i'm super here for it <laughs> superb, superb i rock with that um i've been listening to that and then also been listening to earth gang they have oh yeah earth, earth gang is nice i love earth gang yeah. they're gonna be they here they, oh, that's you know, unfortunate. They went to- that's unfortunate. That yeah. but, they got, the, but they didn't finish. They got kicked out. They talked about it on a breakfast club with Envy. So Envy's trying to like figure out a way to like help get them to finish. <laughs> so oh, they got kicked out. Okay, that's cool. They come to Howard then. Finish there. <laughs> Transfer your credits. <laughs> Transfer your credits. Oh, man. So like the real, the real actual HU. Go there. You know. Oh, man. Um, did y'all catch Tiana, Major- have- Tiana Majors? Yep, yep, yep. I heard her. I have not. That's your Tiana Major Nine. Oh no, it's, no, it's, no, hers is smooth. Hers is smooth. Is. The name of the album escapes me at the moment. I mean, I'm gonna tell you in like two seconds, but like, no, nah, she, she, uh, she did, a, she did a thing on this one. It's called Fool Me Once. You talking about Fool? Yeah, yeah, Fool, Fool Me, me Once. Once. That's what it's called. That's exactly what it's called. Yeah. Mm-hmm. Okay. Mm-hmm. What kind of vibes is it giving? Should I listen to this like when I'm in the car, when I'm in the house? Tiana's usually. I would listen to half of it in the car and half of it in the house. Like, <laughs> I don't know that I would play the whole thing in the car. I was gonna say both. So <laughs> yeah. Like, cause as soon as you get past, cause like, this is only like a couple tracks, you know what I'm saying? Mm-hmm. Like, it's just like pick and choose what you want. Cause she, she, cause she knows she never gives us like a whole fucking album. She, she yeah. She always, like a it's few like songs here and there. That. That's, what I yeah. like. That's what I like. Give us the good shit. Uh, give, well give then two seater in the car and then play all the rest in the house. Okay. Yeah. Yeah. That's but you know how you can understand like what the difference is like, well, this is in my, this is my car music right here. This is well, my, that's, I got the scene of this. No, that's exactly what I mean, because I was in the dog park earlier today and I was playing um, Candy Drip in my headphones. And like in the beginning, again, I walked there. I was like, this is not some poppy shit. He wants to be on the radio. He wants to be on TikTok. That's cute. And then as soon as we hit track six, I was like, ooh, nigga, you hit the vibe. OK. <laughs> All right. Oh, oh, my God. Who, who are you? It changed your walk, huh? Oh, my, it really did. I was like, All right now. Like, and then at that moment, all the dogs surrounded me. They knew. They knew the vibe. They were like, oh, what's up? 
It was crazy, man. Not was, the dogs knew the vibe. They really did. Dogs can sense that shit. They're smart, man. They're intuitive. No, they are. Dogs be knowing. My dog, she know everything. Mm-hmm. Um, there was one song that I did want to shout out that I literally had on repeat like all day on Sunday. It's called um, Lessons Remix. It's Eric Roberson featuring Anthony Hamilton, Raheem Devon, and um, oh, what's his name? Hold on. It escapes me. Um, Lessons. Kevin Ross. Kevin Ross. Kevin Ross. Shout oh, out Kevin Ross. Ross on it? Oh, well, maybe I will. Kevin Ross, like Diana Ross? No, 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 no. As no, a sweet, sweet release, sweet release, Kevin Ross. You, you thinking oh. of, you sweet thinking release. of uh, Evan Ross. <laughs> Evan, yeah. I'm like, ain't that his name? No. Diana Ross has um, a son? Evan. I didn't know yeah. that. Okay, I just learned something new. That play T.I. Little that Brother. Oh, yeah, shit, that's her son. That's not her grandson. That's played to Ashley Simpson. He played in another movie too. Some little <laughs> well, you make that. Queen Latifah and I mean, like, oh, that's, that's wonderful. wonderful. Thank you. Good job, bro. Yeah. You're so silly. <laughs> anyway, that's a dope song. Lessons Remix. So smooth, melodic. Their voices are like butter on it. Just And just the message of the song. I'm like, I literally played it back to back to back to back to back, like all day Sunday. So check it out. Okay. Definitely gonna look into that. And they got I'm, all the old heads on there. I'm here for it. I'm I'm gonna shout out one good dude was on the, the song Raheem Devon, uh Mr. Midnight. Mr. Hey, Midnight. Mr. Midnight. Mr. Midnight. Like, like Raheem Devon never leaves his pocket, so it's straight up normal Raheem Devon shit. But it's <laughs> well, it's one of the ones you should put on your playlist. It definitely belongs. Okay. Definitely want to check that out. Well, thank you guys for the music recommendations. I know I got some shit to listen to when I'm fake working out. <laughs> not fake working out. I mean, how are you gonna have a shirtless summer? How are you gonna free the nipples again if you're not ready? They're gonna get this nipple the way that they came. Okay, so take me as I am. Be she gonna be out, but you just gonna get her the way she is. I okay. mean, that's real. That's that's super real. <laughs> I don't blame you. You know, I I have other aspirations though for myself. It's different. Okay, you want the nipples, you want the nipples out. Well, you got the blonde hair and now I, you want the nipples out. You really I mean, need to calm down. Really what it really you know what's really funny. So this is this is hilarious. I don't even know why I'm gonna share this, but I'm gonna share it anyway. So when uh the set person who was over here was over here this weekend, because I can't say oh my name. gosh. Anyway. Okay, that sounds good. <laughs> anyway, uh we ended up looking at like the male rompers, right? So like normally I talk shit Why? about them. No, because I don't know. Our ladies were there. Like they were, four years we've been talking about these male rompers. Right, right. Our lady, our ladies were there. They were, they were, they were hyping us up too. So they really, they didn't help. But then they were. I was like, you know what? I'm gonna, I'm gonna go ahead and do this. I'm, I am getting a male romper and I'm gonna bust out with it. I'm, I'm gonna fucking do it. It's happening. Okay. I have a whole, I have a whole fit ready for it too. We talked about nah, this. I want our other friend to wear that male romper with his thick thighs. Ow. Talk about it. Someone Talk about it. Talk wrong. about it. I mean, we're probably going to have a different cut of romper. My cut's going to be a little different than his cut. So, I mean, we're not going to have on the same piece. But, you know, it's going to be fun. Like, are y'all are y'all here for the male rompers? Because no. I'm definitely, I'm, like, I'm still on the fence about the shit. But no. I just feel like, I, <laughs> I feel like I should do it. I'm good. Would I want to talk to a nigga in the romp him? No. Exactly. <laughs> Why not? What if he look good in the romp him? Well, if you look good, I mean, to each their own, do your thing, but it's just not something that I have to have in my life. I'll be okay. I don't say you have to have it. I'm just saying you you with your boo thing. He's like, hey, baby, I'm about to kill him. And you're like, kill him. What you what you going to do? And then he come out. He's like, bam, baby, am I around him? And it looked good. He hugging little cheeks and shit like you like. No, you're not here for it. It just depends on the person, though. No. Unless it's that hell, no. I think I like to see a little thigh me. Who's your favorite male celebrity? Who me? Yeah. Both of you. Who who is your favorite? I don't even think I have one. I don't have favorites like that. So like so Michael That's B. Jordan asked you like out, you're not saying yes? No. Damn, okay. Well, who? all right. Michael B. Jordan. <laughs> I'm playing. Of course, Michael. I mean, he's seen like cool people though. No, I'm just saying he showed up in a if he should, one, But if I'm he shows like, up in a round him. I'm gonna leave my mind. But if he shows up in a round him, are you upset about this? Like what are you still stepping out with him? Okay. If Michael B. Jordan fine ass came up with a rom him on, you would have been like, all right, let's go, Drew. I know. I'll just play. But that's because fine people can also get away with a lot of stuff, though. And that's just bingo. Like, that's it. That's, Talk, that's, a, that's a subject for another. That's a whole topic we can go down the rabbit hole. Right. Off. Oh, shit. I forgot we were still doing this, but we be good for recess today. Thighs and rompers and shit. Right. But that's what? all I have for press on recess. 
Well, if that concludes it, then I guess it's time to say goodbye, ladies. You know, we got to tell everybody, you know, so long and happy trails. But before we do that, you know, everybody, you know, hit that like and subscribe button on YouTube. Check out the visuals. We be on there. You know, go to our Instagram page. Hit the Twitters. Hit the Instagram, uh, not the Instagram, the, uh, the TikToks. You know, they're damn near the same right now with how the reels go, but whatever. Uh, hit the Facebook, hit us on Google, Apple Podcasts, hit us up on uh, Spotify. We're out here. We're here for your listening consumption. And if you can't find us, you're just not looking. That's just all there shame is. Shame on you. Mm-hmm. Exactly. Shame on you. You're missing out on a good thing. <laughs> but until the next time, y'all, I've been Tris. It's your girl, Liz. Shine the die. And even though the party may change, the vibe remains the same. We out, y'all. Bye. Bye.